My body is designed for joy. Because working, always working, ain't it? I work. I work a lot. I work a lot to the bills. I work a lot to work out. This sturdy, heavy, worker bee, steady, has been working ever since her blackness showed up invisible at birth. Since black bodies be measured by childbearing girth, by productivity worth, not working, hard to believe to the capitalist white collar I'd be paying for all of your colleges if I had a dollar. For every time my ability has been questioned by a mediocre whitewashed educated ancient scholar, I'd holler down the imaginary hallway of the massive mansion I built for myself. Wealth and prosperity never was a note I was taught to sing. The capacity of joy and pleasure to the table, I couldn't bring. Because I work. And in this American factory, we don't have time for dreams. We hold fast to needs above us. Barren fields, solid ice, mules and workforces fight for the ability to be seen. And when you are seen, dreams are realized because awakened eyes see more than a body that works, but a body that needs to be pleased over and over and over and over and over consistently. We've been conditioned to receive satisfactories and shoulder chips because what you're going to do when they come for you with that pink slip, probably die. From working too hard to run, from working too hard to lock the door, from working too hard to be seen as human, from working too hard to not disappoint your family and your name and the status quo games we play to stay alive. We don't work for ourselves, we barely survive. But this bluegrass buxom, this Harlem Park meat, this come from nothing, but I ain't just nothing. Beautiful baby needs pursed lips on stiff neck, breathless, endless, abandoned, softness, no work involved. This firm brow needs powerful pause for exploration and workless discovery. Tired of being loved finally, like I owe all of you a piece of me. Like my body works for free, like my body doesn't deserve happiness. constantly remind myself that you as you are is enough you do not have to be perfect you do not have to be the best of the best you are you you're not potential you are you what does your emotional journey look like getting to this beautiful space here and now did it start with brown growth bluegrass wow, I really had negative ideas about myself. Was it because you were around people that didn't look like you, right? That didn't didn't have the same skin tone as you, that didn't talk like you, that didn't have the same shape of body as you, that didn't, you know, all these things. So I think a lot of that low self-esteem comes from, you know, patriarchy. It comes from the messages that are pushed to us. So I always want to remind myself uh, Baby Berry is like a metaphor for the young girls out there, right? So when I speak to Baby Berry, I'm also speaking to the young girls who might be also experiencing the same things I felt as a young person and that like, it's all right, it's okay. And I always, you know, remind my students. Please don't panic, this is black girl magic. Please don't, all the old people skating all part of this life, second home. Yeah. You, know, you are always on the right path. You never... You know, even though it feels like maybe you have to undo some things, you are never on the wrong path. This is what got you to this point. I first learned about you within the vegan world. How did you come to veganism? Mm -hmm. and how does it impact the rest of your world? When I first started, I was like very adamant about it. You know, I'm vegan this, vegan that. And it was very just dietary, they're dietary based. I didn't really become a full vegan, because let's just say I was plant-based. I didn't really become a full vegan until 2016. That's when I started very, very stylish. If you even talk about being a vegan, body shaming is gonna come, fat phobia is gonna come, 
racism is going to come, all of these things that I didn't go vegan for. I went vegan for my health, and then eventually um, I'm fighting for the rights of all the beings. I had a baby once tell me, you so extra. But I was born with this effervescence, and to somebody out there, I was, shoot, am a blessing. This classroom chivalry ain't fun. Battling administrators on the regular on being seen as more than just an extra body in the room. I got minds to a tune, raised from the dead. 150% of the curriculum passed the lyrics in their head, putting to bed all the stereotypes that these kids can't learn. What's more power than the knowledge of the earth? Do you remember the moment this idea came to you? Was it a creative first or something that kind of slowly evolved? Um, has it changed since the beginning? We were facing the election year in 2016. We had one more year of Obama left. It was a lot. So uh, Facebook post said, in times like this, that Harriet Tubman too. Next thing I know, there's a whole monologue. Blackwater River, 1820, Kingship Decree, life as we know it be forever changed. That monologue came to me in the end of 2015. That was the first thing that I had down on paper as a reference to Harriet Tubman. Um, and so then I started to think about, well, what does she live right now? The stuff that you complain about or annoy you about women in 2016, 2017, 2018, 2021, you loved in Harriet Tubman. So what's the difference? What if Harriet Tubman is among us and you don't recognize her because she is a black girl that is questioning you? She might not be as respectable as you like her to be. She's talking back to you. She has a smart mouth, but she's a leader, right? Well, what if baby Harriet showed up with the girls that we see online that you're afraid of, that we see get into their pools, that we see getting dragged out of their um, classroom because they asked a security officer, why didn't you tell anybody else to put their phone away? Right? Just very simple critical thinking skills. Harry Tubman did that. I, knew, I felt it in my soul that she would do that. 2020 shifted the very, very stylish voice a bit, as one would expect. Um, your posts yeah. calling out the industry, social media for treating black women like a trend were powerful and true. Can you talk about that more? Very, very stylish. I was tired. I'm, I, it was before 2020, but especially in 2020. Um, I was just, because we have been calling out green beauty for a long time. Finding makeup that was for brown, darker skin. I was doing reviews and the reviews were getting love. I'm glad to see this on dark skin. I'm glad to see this on dark skin. I'm glad to see this on dark skin. I, I mean, just, just comment after comment after comment. It's hard to find foundations. So I ended up like trying to transition into clean beauty and it was really hard because they had this color for everything, you know? What is this? It's not even a concealer color for me. When 2020 happened, that's when the pull up for change started happening. I started seeing a trend of texturism, of featurism, of colorism, right? Texturism meaning that um, you're not featuring girls with hair like mine. So I started looking for darker skin models on everybody that I solicited. So I was like, okay, let me go to this green beauty brand. Brr, nothing. Let me go to this uh, uh, conventional brand. Brr, nothing. They don't care. You're not our brand. You're not our consumer. Um, that's not, it's, it's not going to happen. 2021 brought you a modeling gig. I feel it's a, this isn't a separate story from your call out posts, but a proper response to them. Yes. Okay. There was an email that said we're looking for people for our app. And I applied. And it was perfect. It was just an experience that, like, let me know that you are you. You're not potential. You're you. Okay? Accept who you are. And what you are is what they're going to get. And that's how I've kind of shifted very, very solid too. What I am is what you're going to get.